Uh, whatever you're wearing will work. We're not going to do anything too crazy. So we'll start seated on our mats or you can take it lying down. We'll do a short um, series of breathing and this um, loving kindness meditation also called the meta meditation. So whether you start seated or if you want to lie all the way on your back, Just allowing the body to start to arrive and relax. Noticing those points where the body meets the ground, where the ground is holding you up. If you're on your back, allowing the hands to rest on the belly. If you're in a seat, allowing the hands to rest on the knees. Allowing the shoulders to melt away from the ears. Just taking a few minutes to arrive in this space. Beginning to even out your inhales and exhales. So we'll go through a breathing technique that adds a count to the breath and sometimes helps us stay focused on the breath and not everything that's swirling around us, even in our homes or outside of our homes. So we'll inhale to a count of four. And then exhale to a count of four. Inhale two, three, four. Exhale two, three, four. So continue with that breath. Eyes can be heavy or closed. Maybe you have fuller lung capacity. You want to inhale to a count of six and exhale to a count of six. Guiding your rhythm of breath, keeping the inhales and exhales even. Let's take three more full rounds. When you feel complete, come back to an even breath. So if you're doing this at home or if we're back at work at some point and you need to calm the mind down, I recommend that you add a count. So you would count four and then that's your first round down four. And then you count up and down two. So inhale two, inhale three. And you would get to 10 and then you would start back over at one. So if you start to lose count, you just start back over at one mentally. So it's a good way to keep your mind and your body in the breath. Some people also like um, kind of like a box count where they're inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, and they're picturing a box. So there's a lot of good resources if you have questions, um, just finding something to focus on. So our thoughts are going to be going no matter what. We're not, um, you know, Zen masters. So knowing that you can't push all the thoughts away, you can just slow down maybe the rapidness of how they're coming in or how much you're attaching to the thoughts. So that's kind of really what we're aiming for more. Let's do a little bit of gentle movement before we take our loving kindness meditation. We'll start with some circles, circling the ribs over the hips. Take a couple of circles each way. Maybe you start to make these a little bit faster or a little bit bigger. Maybe you get some crackle pops in the joints. Take one or two more full rounds. We'll do something similar on hands and knees. So coming to tabletop position. First, we'll find some cat cows. Drop the belly, lift the gaze as you inhale. Exhale, round the spine, tuck to chin. 
Three more full rounds of breath. Inhale as we expand. Exhale as we round. Inhale, expand. Exhale, round. And then we'll find some similar organic movements. So circling the hips back to the heels and then forward. A couple of times each way. Not worried about what it looks like. Normally I would say not worrying about what your neighbor is doing, but in a studio we can see each other. And right now you can only really see me and maybe whoever's practicing next to you. But if there is someone practicing next to you, not worrying about if it matches their pace, or their shaping. So maybe you start to find some figure eights. Just allowing the body to move in any way that's calling to you. Drop the hips side to side. Then we'll sit back down into a seat and we'll find that loving kindness or meta meditation before we find some more movement. So I do like to take this one from a seat, but you can certainly go back to laying down if you would like. For some people, it calms the mind quite a bit more to be laying flat. So you can adjust it if you'd like to lay flat. So again, this is the loving kindness meditation, also known as a meta meditation. So. It's offering all beings in the world loving kindness. So allow the eyes to be heavy or closed. Hands can be on the chest and the belly if that feels okay or anywhere that's comfortable. So start by picturing someone in your life. It could be someone that's close by or it could be someone maybe in your family that you can't physically see right now. Maybe someone who's a little farther away that you may be worried about or you just want to send them some love. So bring that person, bring their face into your mind. And then send them these thoughts. May you be happy. May you be well. May you be safe. May you be peaceful and at ease. Take a cleansing breath. Inhale through the nose. Exhale, side out. Do that again for that person or maybe someone else. Picturing them in your mind. Sending them these thoughts. May you be happy. May you be well. May you be safe. May you be peaceful and at ease. Cleansing breath, inhale through the nose. Exhale, open the mouth, sigh it out. Now picturing a more collective group. Maybe it's everyone in your community or your state or your country. For me, it'll be everyone on this earth. For once, we're all fighting a common enemy. We're all struggling against the same thing. We're really all in the same boat. Our friends and global neighbors in China and Italy and Iran, here at home, all across the world, we're all going through something similar. So I'm going to picture everyone on earth and we'll send them these thoughts. May we all be happy. May we all be well. May we all be safe. May we all be peaceful and at ease. Big breath in, let it go. Again, sending this love out to everyone, everywhere, all the corners of the globe. May we all be happy. May we all be well. 
May we all be safe. May we all be peaceful and at ease. Inhale. Exhale, let it go. So we send love out to some of our loved ones and out to a broader community. So turning this love and loving kindness to ourselves so we tend to give and give and maybe not turn that in and give ourselves some space and some love. So sending yourself this gift. May I be happy. May I be well. May I be safe. May I be peaceful and at ease. So if you'd like to repeat with me at home, may I be happy. May I be well. May I be safe. May I be peaceful and at ease. To get one more time through for ourselves, may I be happy. May I be well. May I be safe. May I be peaceful and at ease. Take a cleansing breath in through the nose. Exhale, let it go. Allow the hands to fall open or wide if you're on the back. Allow these feelings, this loving kindness to envelop you. Take a few more gentle rounds of breath. Then start to take the arms wide and we'll round it forward. So making this curve in the spine, inhale, reach it forward, reach the hands back, starting to warm up the chest. One more full round. And then roll the shoulders, just find some movement. We're going to move into these Tibetan rites. So the Tibetan rites are a series of postures. In theory, they're from about 2,500 years ago. Of course, we don't know that for sure, but that's um, what the history tells us. It was first published in the West about 80 years ago. So the idea is a series of movements. If you don't have time in the morning to find a yoga practice every morning, um, this is something that you can do. You can work your way up. So it's five movements. You can start with just doing one of each. Um, we're going to start with five of each. You can work your way all the way up to 21 is the number they give. So I've done this several times in yoga teacher trainings. Um, I really enjoy the way I feel afterwards. The idea is, in theory, that it's helping to align everything in the body, all of your chakras. So I know that there's a lot of jokes about getting your chakras aligned Um but see if you feel different and you don't have to believe any of it, um, but if it works, it works. So um, it's also supposed to help you have more sound sleep, um, feeling energized, especially in the morning to get going. It works a lot of the major muscles in the body with just some really simple movements, uh, improves spinal health, uh, a lot of additional spinal mobility if you were to do it um, constantly and consistently. And then also is really supposed to help um, relief from body pain and especially in the joints. Um, Getting a lot of nice sun this morning. That's nice. Um, okay, so I'm going to walk you through it, um, and then we'll do it together. So I posted this on Instagram a long time ago. I don't know if anyone saw that. Um, so the first option for spinning is number one. So spinning, you can take your arms wide and just start to spin counterclockwise. So for some people, you start to get dizzy really quick. So that's option one on the spin. Option two on the spin is just take your feet wide, take your arms out, and then start to open and then wrap. So you're just wrapping the spine, finding a little gentle twist. You can make these obviously more dramatic. Okay, so those are your options. Arms out to spin or wrapping. And then we'll go through the other movements. So shake the legs out. We're gonna do it five times, whatever you're choosing to do. Again, if you're just joining, these are the Tibetan rites, and then you can do it at home in the morning. 
I'm gonna do the arm wraps because I get dizzy and then I might not be able to talk, but if you want to take the full circle. So we'll do it nice and slow five times. Big inhale. Exhale, take the arms wide, and then start either your spins or your wraps. Count for yourself. That's three for me. Okay, last time for me. Keep going if you need to. If you want to do a couple more, get up to seven or eight, feel free. And then we'll move to the ground. So this is called the, the J movement. So hopefully you can still see me up. Okay. So we're going to lift our legs straight up into the air at the same time that we lift our head. I like to use the arms a little too. So it looks like this. Sort of like a little crunch. So we're going to do five of those. So we're exhaling as we pull it in. So complete your five there. And then we'll move to the third part of the rates. We can do all this again too, just so you get the feel of it. We're just kind of learning this time. So we knees over hips, we're finding camel posture. We're gonna take the hands to the buttocks or the low back and start to lift the chest up and tilt the head back. And then come back to neutral around a little. So five like this. Hands on the back, open the chest, release. So this is two for me. And then when you find that fifth one, find a little child's pose or wrap it with the knees together. If you're feeling dizzy at all, take a break, take a pause. So this one's probably my favorite. Feels really good on the hip flexors, the front of the body. We're going to start in staff pose. So we're on uh, posture four now. We're going to start on staff pose. So shoulders over the hips, legs straight out away. And then we're going to have the hands, fingertips facing the toes back behind us. We're going to move from the staff pose into reverse table. So lift the hips, press the hips and the chest up, let the head fall back, slowly lower back down, find your staff pose. So five times like that. Flatten the feet, lift the hips and the chest. Take it back to staff or part of the way there. So two. Try to take it nice and slow. Three. Four. Five. Come back to rest in staff pose. Take a nice cleansing breath. To be such small movements, you actually feel things starting to move, don't you? So we're gonna go into the fifth one. It's, it's up dog to down dog. So I'll walk you through it. I actually think just transitioning between up dog and down dog is easier than taking the full high to low plank transition that we do in a lot of classes. If you prefer to take it from the knees, you can just do sort of like a child's and leaning forward, allowing the hips to drop, take it back child. So if you'd like to do it from the knees because down dog doesn't feel good to you, I would do this version. Otherwise, take, find your way to a plank and then untuck the toes, allow the hips to drop down, find up dog so the belly is not touching the floor. Flip the toes down dog, press the chest back, so that's our fifth one. Roll forward. You can keep the toes tucked if that's easier. Find your up dog. Take it back down dog. One. 
two, three, four, last one, Let's all rest in child's pose. So knees wide, toes together, head rest down. So probably your blood is flowing pretty well now. It was probably just about five minutes. So if you did it everything five times through, imagine doing it uh, 15, 20 times through. So I'll just walk you through the series of movements one more time, you won't do it. Um, but just so you have a really quick reference point, um, I'll make a note in the comments of what the timestamp is on this. So the series of movements is spinning counterclockwise, Try to keep your head down so you can dizzy, or arm wraps. That's move number one. Move number two, the Tibetan rights. The J, raising the legs, raising the head. Number three is camel, and then finding a little relief. Number four is legs extended staff pose, Fingertips facing the heels. Reverse table, love that one. Take it back to step. And then five is that up dog to down dog. Or if you're taking from the knees. A little thigh, belly down, up dog to child's. So something to do, especially if tomorrow morning you wake up and I know a lot of you have never really done much yoga and you're doing it every day with me, which is awesome. So if you need like a little something to do tomorrow morning, maybe you just go through three of each of those postures. Um, see how you feel afterwards. I'm a little out of breath, so it must be something. Shh, Norm. Norm is off the camera um, scratching. Okay. So... We'll find a comfortable seat or sitting back on the heels, whatever feels good to you. Just allow the hands to rest. We're just going to let the heart rate come down a little before we find our final guided meditation. Allow the eyes to be closed or heavy. Maybe noticing how there's a lot of movement in the blood flow and the body. Maybe muscles are feeling warm and energized. Knowing that even if it's just five minutes, a little bit of effort and movement can help realign your whole day. A few more rounds of breath here. Hi, buddy. Okay, we're gonna move. So if you need more movement before you take your meditation, maybe come back after the live and you can pause, but, or if you're watching on the playback, and feel free to make some more movement later, but we're going to work our way into a guided meditation. So I like, I think the hearts were probably for Norm, <laughs> even though I'm sure you love the Tibetan rites. Um, I'm going to sit on the blanket. I just think it's more comfortable. This meditation is one of my favorites. I do it on all my retreats. So if you've been on my retreats, I'm sorry, you've heard this before. Um, there's a couple more in this book that I really love that I'm going to add on to the practices at the end of next week. 
So the book is called Wherever You Go, There You Are, John Kabat-Zinn. So um, if you start getting into yoga or meditation, um, he has so many really good books. They're a little, a lot of them are just kind of like shorter. You can see I've done a lot of outlining and stuff. Um, the one we're going to do today is called the mountain meditation. So I don't read it exactly as it is. Um, I cut out some things, but John Kabat-Zinn, this is his work. Don't think I wrote this. I didn't. Um, but I think this is a really good one. Really good way to practice meditation to start is to do a guided meditation because then you have something else to think about besides kind of all the thoughts in your own head. So <clears throat> find a comfortable seat is really the best way to take this meditation. <clears throat> okay, so finding yourself in a comfortable cross-legged seat, if it's possible, that sort of helps with the idea behind this meditation. Um, if it's not possible, anywhere that you can sit comfortably will work. Let's take a cleansing breath together. Inhale through the nose. Exhale, let it go. Let's take two more like that. Inhale. Exhale, let it go. Inhale. Exhale, side out. Allow the hands to be on the knees. Allow the eyes to be closed. It's called the Mountain Meditation from John Kevin Zinn. Close the eyes. I'll read you a little bit of background of why we use the mountain as a symbol for this meditation. Mountains are sacred places. People have always sought spiritual guidance and renewal in and among them. Mountains are held sacred, embodying dread and harmony, harshness and majesty. Rising above all else on our planet, they beckon and overwhelm with their sheer presence. Their nature is elemental, rock. Rock hard, rock solid. Mountains are the place of visions, where one can touch the panoramic scale of the natural world and its intersection with life's fragile but tenacious rootings. Two traditional peoples were and still are the mother, the father, the guardian, the protector, the ally. In a meditation practice, it can sometimes be helpful to borrow these wonderful qualities of the mountain, allow them to bolster our own intentionality and resolve to hold the mountain in the moment with an elemental purity and simplicity. So we'll move into the guided portion of the meditation, allowing the eyes to be heavy or closed. Just like you pictured a loved one earlier, picture the most beautiful mountain you know or know of or can imagine. A mountain whose form speaks personally to you. As you focus on the image or the feeling of the mountain in your mind's eye, notice its overall shape, the lofty peak, the base rooted in the rock of the earth's crust, the steep or gently sloping sides. Notice well how massive it is, how unmoving, how beautiful, whether seen from afar or up close, a beauty emanating from its unique signature shape or form. And at the same time, embodying the universal qualities of mountainness, transcending particular shape and form. Perhaps your mountain has snow at the top and trees on the lower slopes. Perhaps it has one prominent peak or perhaps it has a series of peaks or a high plateau. However it appears, just sit and breathe with the image of this mountain, observing it, noticing its qualities, 
When you feel ready, see if you can bring the mountain into your own body. So that your body sitting here and the mountain of your mind's eye become one. Your head becomes the lofty peak. Your shoulders and arms are the side of the mountain. Your buttocks and your legs, the solid base. Rooted to the floor, experience in your body the sense of uplift. The elevated quality of the mountain deep in your own spine. Invite yourself to become a breathing mountain, unwavering in your stillness, completely what you are, beyond words and thought, a centered, rooted, unmoving presence. Now, as you well know, throughout the day, as the sun travels the sky, the mountain just sits. Light and shadow and color are changing virtually moment to moment in the mountain's stillness. Even the untrained eye can see the changes by the hour. As the light changes and as night follows day and day follows night, the mountain just sits, simply being itself. It remains still as the seasons flow into one another. And as the weather changes moment by moment and day by day, calmness abiding all change. In summer, there is no snow on the mountain except for the very top or in those places shielded from direct sunlight. In the fall, the mountain may display a coat of brilliant fire colors. In winter, a blanket of snow and ice. In any season, and at many times, it may find itself shrouded in clouds or fog, or freezing rain may pelt it. The tourists who come to visit may be disappointed if they can't see the mountain clearly, but it's all the same to the mountain. Seen or unseen, in sun or clouds, broiling hot or frigidly cold, it just sits, being itself. At times, the mountain is visited by violent storms, buffeted by snow and rain and winds of unthinkable magnitude. Through it all, the mountain sits. Spring comes, the birds sing in the trees once again. Leaves return to the trees which lost them. Flowers bloom in the high meadows and on the slopes. Streams overflow with waters of melting snow. Through it all, the mountain continues to sit, unmoved by the weather, unmoved by what happens on the surface and by the world of appearances. As we sit holding this image in our mind, we can embody the same unwavering stillness and rootedness in the face of everything that changes in our own lives over seconds, over hours, over years. In our lives and in our meditation practices, we experience constantly the changing nature of mind and body and of the outer world. We experience periods of light and dark, vivid color and drab dullness. We experience storms of varying intensities and violence in the outer world and our own lives and minds. Hit by high winds, by cold and rain, we too endure periods of darkness and pain, as well as savor moments of joy and uplift. Even our appearance changes constantly, just like the mountains, experiencing the weather and a weathering of its own. By becoming the mountain in our meditation, we can link up with its strength and stability. We can adopt those as our own. We can use its energies to support our efforts to encounter each moment with mindfulness and clarity. It may help to see that our thoughts and feelings, our preoccupations, our emotional storms and crises, even the things that happen to us, are much like the weather on the mountain. We tend to take it personally, but its strongest characteristic is impersonal. 
The weather of our own lives is not to be ignored or denied. It is to be encountered, honored, felt, known for what it is. But by holding it in this way, we can come to know a deeper silence and stillness and wisdom that we may have thought possible right within this storm. Mountains have this to teach us and more if we come to listen. So as we close this meditation, maybe when things start to feel chaotic, or for most of us continue to feel chaotic in this time, can you bring that visualization of yourself as the strong and moving unwavering mountain, whatever weather is coming at you, whatever storms are brewing, can you sit with this knowledge that you are strong and rooted and solid? Knowing that we will all weather this storm together. Taking this time of slowness and stillness in stride leaning into the parts of the experience at the edges that are beautiful, powerful, community-driven, doing our best to weather the storms that seem more prominent at times. Let's take a cleansing breath together. Inhale through the nose. And exhale through the mouth. Let it go. Inhale, reach the arms overhead. Exhale, the hands to the chest. Connect the knuckles of the thumbs to the sternum. Symbolizing the connection of our body to our breath. Taking a moment to find gratitude for the strength and the resilience that you have during this time that you're receiving from your friends and your family. Reminding yourself that you are enough just as you are right now. You have always been enough. You will always be enough. No changes needed. No apologies necessary. In a sense of gratitude and feeling enough with you through the rest of your day and your weekend. It's truly my honor to guide you through your practice. The light in me sees and honors the light in each of you. Namaste. So yogis, thank you so much for joining this morning. I know it was a little bit different of a practice, but I think it's good to fill up your toolbox. Again, I'll show you the cover of this book. Um, we'll do another meditation from it uh, later next week. So again, if you live in a place where you already practice yoga and um, you can support that yoga studio by joining their classes online, viewing their content or buying a class pass. That would um, be awesome. They definitely need your support. Same with your local restaurants. Please uh, share this with your family and friends. Um, I'm doing this uh, for all of you and hopefully you can um, share that with others. I've had several people reach out to me and say they did not practice